What's going on YouTube? It is time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Once again, we have Hound Doom. Just Mega Hound Doom hits really, really hard. Here you can see I changed the team slightly from last battle video. Um, I now have Jump Pluff here. Tacked as a secondary sun user. I didn't even get a chance to use Hound Doom in the sun a lot last video. Now, it's important to mention that uh, as last time, I, I, I bring Doug Trio purely for things like Talonflame, which this team just otherwise really can't handle. Um, and we'll actually get a chance to hopefully see some of that this battle because I see Talonflame on my opponent's team. Leo also has uh, a pretty Houndoom weak team overall. My Houndoom has Destiny Bond, Dark Pulse, Solar Beam, and Fire Blast. And I'm able to hit everything on his team for neutral or super effective. So if I can keep the sun up, um, Houndoom is fast, but he does have two priority users. So if I can keep the sun up and stay away from those priority Pokemon, Houndoom should be able to do a good amount of work this battle. I'll also need to watch out for the off chance that Excadrill is one of those weird ones that sets up its own sandstorm in order to sweep. If that's the case, it'll be a little bit more difficult to keep my weather up. And of course, I won't have access to Solar Beam, which hits two of his Pokemon super effective, and I don't really have any other way to hit those two Pokemon super effective. Um, and the biggest thorn in his side of the field, I think, is going to be either Slowbro, depending on the build, or Talonflame. Uh, I have several, I don't have anything that really resists Talonflame's attack, so I'm going to have to keep Stealth Rocks from Excadrill off the field, and uh, also avoid bouncing my own Stealth Rocks off as Espeon, because uh, then I'll just have to go through extra turns to go away and spin them away. So that's kind of the game plan for this battle, we'll see how everything goes. Um, be sure to go check out my opponent on Twitter if you're interested in battling him, I'll leave his Twitter link in the description. So as mentioned here, Yuxi is just a great Pokemon to start off with, just because a lot of people expect you to start off with Ninetales. Yuxi, I'm able to set up the Sunny Day in case he wants to go for Hydro Pump, and I'm also faster than him, which tells me, of course, that he is, of course, not Scarfed, and he's probably the bulky variant that's pretty popular nowadays. Um, he does end up just going for um, Volt Switch out in the Caesar. That's annoying because I don't want to switch out from Caesar because he'll get Switch Priority, and I don't really have anything good to switch on a Mega Caesar's U-Turn. So I just stay in and go for Stealth Rock, hoping that the U-Turn will KO, KO be, or maybe he'll go for Bullet Punch and it won't do that much damage. But yeah, I'll just go straight for U-Turn, which is, I don't want Yuxi to go down this early, but I do get several more turns of Sun this way, and my Stealth Rocks are up to state. I knew he would probably be tempted to go straight for the U-Turn instead of switching it to SB out there. Now, this is a great opportunity to go out into Mega Houndoom. With the sun up, I'm not really that worried about um, uh, road time, and I know that I outspeed because of earlier, Yuxi outsped it, and I don't think many people expect the Solar Beam from Houndoom. Uh, so I'm able to take out Rotom Wash really early on in this battle, uh, and that is fantastic. Now, here is that Talonflame that I told you I'd have an issue with. He sends out this Talonflame that I actually bred for him. His name is Thanksgiving, which I just... It's so appropriate. It cooks itself. It's a self-cooking bird. But, um... I just go out into my physically defensive Starmie to try to take a hit. Uh, he does get a critical hit. That did matter, but he would have just outsped me on the next turn and used another Brain Bird. So, um... That only matters in the sense that it may have... He would have taken two Life Orb recoils instead of one where he would have he died. Um, but here we see Dugtrio do exactly what I needed to do. Which is go down to its sash, um, and now I have a really, really strong reversal attack, and I believe I outspeed everything on his team now. Um, so that's really nice. Now I don't want to stay in against Caesar because the bullet punch is painfully obvious. Uh, and so we're going to take this opportunity to go back out in the Ninetales, or not back out in the Ninetales, just out in the Ninetales, because I know I can take any types of moves that Caesar wants to go for. Uh, the only thing that he could use that would be. Neutral will be a dark type move that they, you sometimes see um, Thief on Caesar now. But uh, that's not too common. And even if he took my leftovers, I can still scare him away with a burn. 
I thought Slowbro might be coming in, which is why I didn't just go straight for the Flamethrower. But it turns out that this is a physically defensive Slowbro, which means Flamethrower is actually going to do a good bit. If I had uh, a little bit of special attack investment, I actually might be able to um, knock out the Slowbro a little easier. Now, I did just go for um, the Confuse Ray right there because I knew my son was going to run out and I wanted to set it back up manually before I switched out from Nine Tails. Uh, I saw the suggestions in the last video that uh, I might consider putting the Heat Rock on Nine Tails instead of on Yixie. Uh And that's not a bad idea. I might try switching that around some. But it wasn't really needed here, of course, because I have Jump Pluff to set up uh, Sunny Day. So he was either expecting me to attack or to switch right there. And I'm not really afraid of Espeon unless it has um, something weird like Hidden Power Ground or Hidden Power Fighting. Then it can actually rip a hole into my Houndoom, but it actually turns out that he's dual screens, which is like, ah, annoying. Because installing out his dual screens, of course, is very likely that he has Light Clay to make him last for 8 turns instead of 5. Um, that's going to stall out my own son. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with how well Ninetales takes that stab psychic attack. And of course, Espeon does not have a way to recover its own HP outside of Morning Sun, which is not common unless it's on a Sun Team. And here I'm very fortunate that he doesn't have it. Actually doing it the burn hacks off the flamethrower, that doesn't really matter that much because if he had switched out and back in, he would have died to Stealth Rocks anyway. Uh, so he was kind of forced to stay in there. Again, I just want to confuse the Slowbro. Now I need to stall some turns off these screens. Slowbro is too bulky to try to um, hit with Houndoom. And even with the sun up, I still don't really want to take a Scald attack. Uh, so it, this is really just, uh, I really just wanted to get those screens out of the way, especially because Espeon can't set them back up again. Now I did need to see what moves his Slowbro had. It turns out he has Toxic on a Slowbro. I much prefer that on my Jump Puff than I do on my Ninetales. Just because, um, number one, Jump Puff has Leech Seed, which can help offset it. And of course, uh, Jump Puff has uh, kind of that hit and run type playstyle on my State Puff tier. So he won't be staying in as long as my Ninetales normally would be. Uh, now, I was expecting him to just go for a Psychic type attack, so I stayed in and went for Leech Seed. But he actually uses the opportunity to go out into his Caesar. And that's perfect because I would love to put this thing to sleep. I know he can't KO me with anything barring like a critical hit attack. And even without the sun, I outspeed. So clearly there he was probably going to go for a bug bite or maybe a U-turn. Uh, so I'm able to put him to sleep, which is really, really nice. Uh, Caesar does have a decent amount of HP. So uh, I'm getting that HP back to offset the toxic damage. Now we're just going to U-turn. I don't want him to know that I have... Um, sunny Day on my Jump Puff yet. That is not something that he needs to know because then he might take some of his focus away from Ninetales, which I don't really want. I need the facade and Ninetales is the only way I have to keep the sun up right now. So I'm going to come back in with Ninetales. I know he's probably going to switch out to Slowbro. Uh, he doesn't really have any reason to sacrifice his Caesar right here when he can live a uh, switch into Stealth Rocks and all that good stuff. But more importantly, the light screen wears off. So I'm able to switch out into Houndoom, predicting his switch out into his Slowbro. The, the sun is up, and I have four turns remaining on it, and I get a chance to blast a few more things. The only downside to switching around like that is that I lose a little bit of HP to solar power, because at the end of the turn is when solar power activates. But, you know, it's that's fine to take that little bit of damage. Now I make a little bit of uh, misplay here. I went for a solar beam, um, I, and what's dumb about it is that I was predicting Excadrill to switch in, which it doesn't make sense. I could have just gone for Dark Pulse and it would have hit all three. Super effective on Slowbro and of course neutral against Steel types, but I had actually forgotten Dark was neutral against Steel. I'm still getting a little bit used to that. Uh, that fifth gen mentality, man. It's killing me there. Uh, and I actually don't end up taking out the Caesar, of course, with the Solar Beam. And because of that misplay, we have to do this little do -si do all over again. I think Caesar will die to a switch in the Stealth Rocks though, which is pretty nice. I end up switching out to Ninetales because I know that the sun's going to wear off in one more turn. I didn't want to chance him waking up and smacking me with a bullet punch. It is resisted, but it still would have hurt. No reason to take that risk and, and have my really only way to deal with his slow row go down. Skull does such a pitiful amount, it is kind of hilarious. Uh, it's That makes it very painfully obvious that he's a completely physically defensive build. Um, 
especially by how much he took from that flamethrower. And here I'm just trying to force him into going for slack off. Uh, and I, I would have loved to switch in on the turn that he was going for a slack off. Of course, slack off recovers half of his HP, but Houndoom can one hit KO Slowbro. So it doesn't really matter that he's recovering that HP if I can decimate him in one hit there. The trick is that I also have to switch in on the turn when the sun is up. I don't think I can one hit KO him without the sun being up. I tried to go, I knew he was going to go for slack off that turn, but I thought, okay, maybe I can take him out right now with the flamethrower. Unfortunately, not quite enough damage to do so. That may have been a, min a minimum damage roll. Looked like that was about a three, to three hit KO there with the burn damage. Wasn't quite able to get that, which is annoying. But that's okay, he's back at half HP. Um, I know that uh, I I have one more turn left on my son, and so that means I can switch in Houndoom as he slacks off, and I won't take the uh, solar power at the end of my next turn, because uh, the sun will wear off, so I, may, I can conserve a little bit of HP there. Now then, ex knowing now that no matter what he switches in, I can hit it with the solar beam, I'm just gonna go for solar beam this turn. Uh, it was my most powerful thing against Slowbro, I think. Even if, because uh, Dark Pulse after the stab boost is the same base power as Solar Beam. So, I I don't know, I just kind of, I enjoy throwing Solar Beams around because you don't get to use that move often, darn it, okay? That's how that works. I do um, want to stay in and go for the Fire Blast on Excadrill. I didn't know if Dark Pulse would KO outside of Sun. Uh, Excadrill does commonly run a Salt Vest, which will raise a special defense. No sense um, in, in kind of letting him get a free Earthquake off on anything. But I also didn't want the chance of him setting up rocks or anything like that, so I just stayed in and took the risk with the Fire Blast, and fortunately it paid off. Um, now that Excadrill is no longer around, I have a decent amount more Wiggle Room. Slowbro is still kind of the thing that's walling my team, uh, and so now I'm just going to bring in Jump Puff to it because I know it's going to take him several attacks to finish me off, just because I have a max HP investment. And I finally um, will be able to Leech Seed him alongside the Burn, and I'll be able to put up the sun, hopefully, as I die to a psychic type attack or a psy shark or whatever. Um, so that was kind of my game plan there because I didn't use Sunny Day the whole battle, so I didn't know if he knew that I had it or not. So I'm finally able to use it as he uses psy shark to take me down, which is perfect because I actually had the heat rock on my jump puff this battle. So that means I have eight unabated turns of glorious sunny delight. That is fantastic because in this end game of the battle here. That means Houndoom basically gets to come in and wreck shop, and there's nothing my opponent can do about it. I took out his Talonflame, and I finished off his um, Excadrill, of course. So there, at this point, there is nothing he can do about it. So I, I'm going to end up taking an extra turn of solar power damage here because he just death fodder Caesar. That doesn't really matter. He did switch out in order to get the Regenerator boost on his Slowbro and to get rid of the Leech Seed. But you see there, with the solar power boost, I'm able to one-hit KO it with Dark Pulse which is fantastic, and that's going to be the end of the battle. So thank you very much, Leo, for the match. That was a fun match, man. I I, I really need to run... I need to find a partner for Mega Houndoom that is physically oriented, maybe a Tangrowth or something like that that can take advantage of the sun, because just having all special attackers and having Doug Trio be my one physical attacker, not necessarily the best game plan. But there, we kind of did see the power of Mega Houndoom in the sun, which I was not able to show off last battle. So I hope you all enjoyed this. You'll have a fantastic week. I'll talk to you all later. Bye now.